it's time to meet our expert on oral communication, Professor John Levis. Professor Levis researches oral communication in English. He has taught English speaking at the University of Illinois, where he learned effective methods for teaching speaking. He studied a lot about how spoken language works and the role of speakers' accents in their pronunciation and their intelligibility. I asked Professor Levis how he became interested in oral language, and this is what he said. How did you get interested in speaking? When I was doing my master's degree, I um, started my master's degree in TESOL after being a, a supermarket manager for a while, and I went to a um, the University of Illinois, and my first semester, I took two classes. One was a phonetics, actually English phonology and morphology for ESL teachers, and the other was a, a teaching practicum. And in both of those classes, um, spoken language and pronunciation in particular were, were really important. And from that point on, I just was interested in that much more than most other areas. I also like teaching methods, and I was able to later teach um, pronunciation with, with Wayne Dickerson, who was a professor at University of Illinois, and um, I was able to be the teaching assistant for Pearl Goodman, who, who taught the practicum. Um, so in my time during my graduate work in Illinois, I, I worked in both um, pronunciation and in teaching methodology. Professor Levis emphasized that the study of phonology and morphology can help teachers teach speaking. By phonology, he meant the study of the sound system of a language and how the sounds work together. Sounds work differently in different languages and so the phonology can be a very difficult aspect of language learning. By morphology, he meant the study of the smallest units of meaning in language, including their sounds. For example, in English, the past tense, ed, is a morpheme. It has the meaning of past. But in order for students to actually use the past tense in their speaking, it's very useful to recognize that the ED spelling form that we put on words in writing actually has different sounds. For example, I say walked, where the sound is the T at the end. Walked. I say guessed, where again it sounds like a T at the end. Guessed. But when I say played, it sounds like a D, or studied, so that ED sound isn't really the sound, the ED is the spelling. And the sound really depends on the phonological environment in which the morpheme is placed. By phonological environment, I mean which sounds are right next to the ED morpheme. In the two cases, the sounds that are next to the ED are both called voiceless consonants. The K in English is a voiceless consonant, and so is the S sound sound. The words played and studied, in contrast, end in the voice sounds. So where the voiced sounds are at the end of the verb, the morpheme has the D sound. This is just one example of a very important aspect of English language morphology that is better understood if we can look at the phonology. Professor Levis said that he learned how to teach speaking in a practicum class in graduate school. It was the practicum in language teaching. That's a class where the students do practice teaching with guidance from the professor. Professor Levis received a lot of guidance on how to teach the sounds of English, and the students loved to learn. There's a lot to learn about the English sound system, 
and it's not something that you pick up naturally. It's a study that you need to do very intensively in order to understand how sounds in English work.